I'm Nardi Rose, and there is no place like Croydon. <laughs> Calm down, baby. From I was born, um, you know, my parents, we lived in Norbury, then we lived in Thornton Heath, then we was in West Croydon. We've always been just in and around Croydon. Yeah, it's, it's a huge part of me. I went to school here, I met most of my friends here, and a lot of other artists are from around here. And yeah, it's just, like I say, it's the hustle and bustle. There's always something going on. <laughs> yeah, I mean, let's, let's go around, really. Let me show you what is good in the hood. <laughs> Right, we're off to the old Whitgift Centre. If you're talking Croydon Centre, <laughs> you're talking Whitgift. <laughs> Sensei! Sensei! So, here we are at Whitgift Centre. Growing up, this was the spot. Like, when you left school, you came here. Everybody was here and it was very creative. Like, you had rappers, you had singers, dancers. It was the place, like, even... Just now, like five minutes ago, there was a guy preaching just here. This is the place to be seen and heard. And I've always been inspired by the ends. Like, there was a guy, the yard man, the reggae guy. He'd be outside the reggae shop, holding a vibes. Like, he's in his own world. People then would stop him. What's he doing? Or people got used to it, like, oh, my man's out again. So when I started doing music, it was only right that I emulated that same thing, because I was so inspired by it. So I came here to shoot my music video, DFWT. And again, I was just in the middle of Croydon, just doing my thing. People didn't know who I was, what I was doing, but it felt quite exhilarating. There's been a lot of great talent to come out of the ends. We have Stormzy, Smoke Boys, formerly known as Section Boys, Bonkers. We had Crepton Conan down the road. Um, even Jazz Karras is coming up from here now at the minute, which is good. And I just think, I think it's great to see, you know? I think what happened was, there was a lot of love being shown to the artists out of East London and North London and a bit of love in West, but when you looked at Croydon, nobody was really trying to include us in anything. So I feel like we're kind of joint forces and just like everybody from here and backing everybody as if it was their own. And yeah, it was nice and that you really saw the change in dynamics and it was just suddenly this wave of Croydon. Well, that's what it looked like to everybody. But from us, for us here, we'd be knowing what was going on, you know? Come on, Sonny. Good boy. Croydon definitely has changed over the years. So no, it just didn't feel like it was very developed. But over the years, it has it's slowly becoming like, you know, Shoreditch and, you know, those spots there where the hipsters go, you know. It's... <laughs> when I was growing up, there weren't that many studios or youth clubs or, you know, just these spots that the kids could go to to just express themselves. I lived on an estate, and on that estate, you know, those are the boys. They made music. I remember there was this... This year he produced, I think he got a little um, little bit of change from his mum and he went out and bought himself a mic and a little interface and yeah, we just had a little setup in his house and that was that was the spot. Yeah, there, I definitely remember those first moments and they were special. So, we're at Valley Park, and this is what makes me feel like super youthful. I even celebrated a birthday here, I'm sure. I mean, a couple of hundred of years ago, but, um, but yeah, and it was just really good vibes here. Um, and I remember coming and just hearing, like, hearing the music at bowling, like, everyone be pretty focused on, you know, the game, and yeah, oh, I'm quite competitive, but. When there's music involved, it's like that just trumps everything. And yeah, I just be in my zone. And I still come around here now. On occasion, I might bowl with the girls, you know. Obviously, I win. <laughs> they said I'm lying, but no, I do. Large up Valley Park. <laughs> We're walking down to the Brit School. 
uh, which has played a huge role in like my creative expression and all the things that I've learned just to do with music, dance, theatre, other works. I actually remember doing theatre in this building here, one of these rooms. It's an experience I'll never forget and a lot of people always like to say, oh, you're such a natural. It's like, yeah, thanks. Like, yeah, there definitely is um, a natural aspect to it, but there's definitely tons that I learned through the Brit School. I would learn about, you know, Frank Sinatra songs, Erica Badu, and these times I'm super young and didn't really know much about those. But yeah, being here, I was educated, like, about, you know, deeper music than just what was going on at bowling, so yeah. Tell a young boy, come, they be like, OK, man, I come from the streets when a man don't play. Wanna know about beef, wanna know about beef, wanna know about street, come and my street. So, here we are. We've arrived at Whitehorse Estate. And this is important to me because I actually grew up here. My house was right there. I could literally see the park from that window. And this is the spot, you know, when you say, like, oh, Mum, can I play out? This was what I was talking about. <laughs> and, like, yeah, this was just... This was cool because this is where everyone came to. Like, I... You know, like I was saying in some of the other locations, just about everybody coming together. Um, this is what this spot was again. Um, yeah, it was just good vibes, good energies. Um, and it was a nice place for people to just get away from whatever they might have been dealing with, away from it. And loads of my friends made or were into music. So we would be in here having our little rap battles. And I remember us all like huddling around, you know, little Walkmans and listening to music. and. The guys from the ends, Heathset, SMN, they were the guys that, when you share music by infrared or Bluetooth or whatever, that it was their tunes and they were like the local hood celebs. And, and there was even a chick on there, Gannett. Gannett, Gannett, nothing long. And she was holding it down for the gallon. She was the only girl on the track. And I just remember like feeling inspired by that. So I got loads of love for the ends because it definitely contributed to the journey.